Welcome. This is 49H1 and it's the definition of capacitance. Um, a little bit of a preamble. Um, we're beginning to look at circuits and circuits are made up of power supplies. Power supplies. These could be uh, DC, that's direct current like a battery, or AC, like what comes out of the uh, a wall, or sometimes we call them function generators, which give us sawtooth or square wave or sine wave type voltages. And we apply these power supplies to circuits, and the circuits consist of components. And in a series of components, we could have resistors, We can have capacitors and we can have inductors. These are three very common components. We can also get on with digital circuits and, and the like. You can get more complicated things. Uh, we could have amplifiers in, in a circuit, IC, uh, integrated circuits, etc. Um, we're beginning, so we're going to look basically in the next few classes, we're going to be looking at uh, these components. And uh, I was taught with resistors to begin with, uh, but it makes a bit of sense because we've been de dealing with charges to deal with capacitors to begin with. Now, capacitors are, well, charge holding devices. But that's not what they're most commonly used for. Capacitors are electric field devices. And that's also useful, but it's not what they're most commonly used for. Um, they're also frequency, let's say sensitive devices and that's often what we care about it turns out as we'll find out later capacitors tend to ignore high frequency signals but they really um i want to say the word punish they really diminish it they really uh, resist low frequency uh, signals and i'd say most capacitors that are used are used for that last uh, capability now, that's not to say they're not used for the other two, but most, most capacitors are used for that, for that uh, frequency sensitivity aspect. So we're going to talk about the charging of a capacitor. We're going to talk about the electric field within a capacitor. And we're going to talk about the energy storage in a capacitor. And it's all useful, but we're going to be heading beyond that to what's called the transient effects. So let's begin anyway. So what we can say is that a capacitor's capacitance is the magnitude of the charge stored on one plate of the capacitor for each volt of potential difference applied across the capacitor. So I could imagine we have a capacitor, it's got say a top plate and a bottom plate. And we begin charging up we put positives on one plate and negatives on the other. And at some point, we fall off. We can't have any more charges on there. Now, uh, we can say that this was caused by a potential difference across the component. We could also say that the potential difference results from this charge. It's a chicken and an egg situation to some extent. Um, but what we say is that if we have a big capacitor, we can store more charge for a given potential difference. And with a smaller capacitor, we can store less charge for a given potential difference. So we define our capacitance as the total amount of charge we can get on one or other of the plates. Not both of them, because they cancel, but one or other of the plates divided by the potential difference between the plates. Uh, capacitance is a scalar quantity, so we don't have to worry about uh, directionality. 
and capacitance is measured in farads. Yeah, farad named after Faraday. And this is one of those named units. And it would have been beautiful if they had just simply said it was uh, in coulombs per volt because then you would know to take something that was measured in coulombs and divide it by something that was measured in volts. Uh, but because we named it Farad, I'm afraid there's no help. You're going to have to know what the Farad means. <laughs> um, so let's have a look at one of these. So what we're saying here is how much charge can a seven pico farad you got to know your prefixes so this is seven pico farad capacitor hold when there's a four millivolt potential difference across it so okay how much charge would be stored well that depends upon the definition of capacitance We'd say capacitance is equal to my charge over my potential difference. And so I want to know how much charge can it hold? So Q is equal to C times delta V. So Q is equal to 7 times 10 to the minus pico, piccolo, smallest instrument in the orchestra. 10 to the minus 12 times 4 times 10 to the milli 10 to the minus 3 so Q is going to equal 7 fours 28 times 10 to the minus that's going to be minus 15 and that's going to be measured Q is measured in coulombs Ooh. You notice some problem, and that is we used C to mean capacitance in one context, and we use C to mean coulombs in another context. And that, for a casual student, can be totally confusing. So my advice is actually you either get used to the context or to help yourself you might actually just you know use a curly C for capacitance and use a straight C for for, for cool arms or make your C's different you know you have a pen you can do what you like with it so there's no need to make those units those symbols look exactly the same they're not the same so you might as well you gotta use a C gotta be recognizable as a C but you know you can use whatever uh, font you want, if you like. Um, there's nothing in uh, the rules says you have to change 28 into 2.8, so I would just leave it as it is. Cool. Then this next one is, which trace best represents the relationship between the charge on a capacitor and the potential difference across the capacitor? So here's the charge on the capacitor, and that's a vertical. And again, the symbol for charge is Q. Yeah, it's measured in coulombs, so there's a C there, but the symbol for charge is Q. And the potential difference for this guy is delta V. So what we say is, we say, oh, let's go back to our definition of capacitance. Capacitance is equal to Q over delta V. I'd like my Q to be the Y bit. So Q is equal to C delta V. And it seems to me that if that's my Y bit, that's like Y, and that is my X bit, there's my X bit down here, then this is my slope. And there's no B, it goes through the origin. And this is a linear curve. Now there's two linear curves on here. There's one which decreases as potential difference increases. And there's another one which increases 
as potential difference increases. And clearly, as delta V increases, Q increases. So the answer should be D. So make sure you get that right way around. There we have it.